Hey friends, uh, my name is Colby Sharp. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Parma, Michigan, and I'm here with Anna Mariano, who is the author of Love, Sugar, Magic. The first book is A Dash of Trouble. Yep. How are you? I'm good. How are oh, you? I'm great. We're at the Summer Reading Summer Reading Splash. Summer Reading Splash in Austin, Texas. It's the AISD Public Library, or AISD and the Public Library. Yeah, it's so hot. But you're used to this heat. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not really that hot today. <laughs> I'm dying, Francis. It was 100 degrees yesterday, so I taught all day in Michigan. It was 70, and then I got here, and it was like 10 o'clock at night. It was like 90. Yeah. You're used to the heat. I'm used to the heat. This is, um, we had kind of a nice, like, long, extended winter, which, I mean, probably doesn't bode well for the planet, but it was kind of nice. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we're just getting into our, like, 100, 110 degree weather, you know, when you get in your car and can't touch the steering wheel. Um, but like usually that starts earlier in May even and lasts all the way oh. till about September, October. You brave people down <laughs> here. So can you tell us a little bit about your amazing book? Um, sure, yeah. So my book is, well you covered it probably better yes. than I can already. Oh, we'll put like video. a link, we'll do this here, put like a link. Click there yeah. too, yeah. Um, But my book is about a girl named Leo Legrano. She's 11 years old, she lives in a small town in Texas and her parents run the local bakery. Um, she is the youngest of five sisters, and she's sometimes a little bit left out because of that. You know, her older sisters talk over her head, um, or her family speaks Spanish so that she can't understand what they're saying. Um, and so she is spying on her sisters one day, like you do, and she discovers that they are secretly witches, brujas, that do magical baking in the bakery, and they have a magical recipe book for all these great spells they can cast, and she's not supposed to know anything about it, so, instead of, you know, telling anyone about this, she steals the family recipe book and starts trying to do some magic on her. And she does, her sisters do catch her um, pretty early on, and so she, like, gets them to keep her secret. But she does not tell her parents. She sneaks around and does some spells on her own, and it goes about as well as you would expect. It goes terrible. It goes terrible. absolutely about as bad, and she definitely gets in more than a dash of trouble, I would say. <laughs> like, she makes some really... Starts out with a dash, and then, you yeah. know, she forgot to use her hand to... Well, she does what everyone would probably do if they realized that their family could do was, could do these magic spells and things, right? Like, yeah, and I mean, she's trying to help a friend. She thinks, oh, I have this power, I have to use it, you know, well, I mean, I think she just wants to use it because it's fun, but also, I can use it to help my friend, I can use it to get, you know, to smooth some problems over, to get some... Trash. Sorry if the sound was bad there. It's all good. And so, yeah, so she thinks that she can do that and help her friend out and uh, solve some problems, and then everything just goes on its own path. Yeah. And there's going to be more. We get to, ex we get to visit, revisit this world. Yeah. Again. I'm actually really excited for the second book because I'm going to kind of try to open up the world a little um, to the larger town of Rose Hill, Texas. Um, and we get to see maybe some more of her friends that we saw in the first book. We get to see more of them. Um, some, the title is going to be, the subtitle is going to be A Sprinkle of Spirits. Oh, I see what you did there. So we might get to see some people who don't currently live in the town a little more. And that was kind of visited a little bit in the first book. Yes, there was a little, there was a very brief appearance uh, yeah. from a spirit in the first book. And there might be some longer appearances from some other spirits in this next book. What do you enjoy most about writing this story? Well, I really love the sorry. I really love the, the joy that's in these books and how these books are really a celebration of so many things, but the culture and the family and the traditions. Um, and I was talking with some other people earlier at this event um, about the importance of you know tackling heavier subjects in middle grade, like grief and like loss and racism, and you know it's so important to explore those ideas in books for kids of all ages because kids of all ages deal with them. But I kind of with writing Leo and her family, I got to kind of make the decision that this was not going to be a book like that. Caroline's dealing with grief and loss. The second book will explore that a little more, but I think like the main focus of this book is the celebration and the joy that comes from you know having your family and having your culture and having your tradition, um, and so and and also finding your thing. Like Leo is. Leo has this great like joy about the magic that I always I always wanted magic powers and so I feel like I get to live out that like finding out you have magic powers excitement yeah. through writing it. Which I think is really interesting. You don't want like let's say a black child to only see books that where 
the black child is dealing with racism exactly. and things like that. Yeah. Otherwise, that's, mm -hmm. they need other things. Not that those right. stories aren't extremely important. Exactly, you need both. Yeah. And it's fair because, you know, white kids get both. Yeah. <laughs> white, kids get, white kids get all of it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I say that with very light skin, so I'm not, I'm not suffering mm -hmm. um, from lack of seeing myself. But it, it's important. Like, it's important to have all of them. And that's what Cake Literary is really interested in, getting the sort of more high concept, fun, fantasy, adventures type uh, stories with diverse protagonists. Can you tell us a little bit about what Cake Literacy is? Yeah, Cake Literary is um, a packaging company founded by Danielle Clayton and Sona Charapotra. And so they wrote, um, well, Danielle, of course, wrote The Bells, um, who's the big one now. They wrote Tiny Pretty Things, um, and then Cake Literary has was behind The Gauntlet and Love Sugar Magic, and there's a new one coming out. I don't remember. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they've got projects in the works. And um, their kind of outlook is to write diverse, high concept, uh, YA and middle grade, and maybe also adult fiction. Wow. And um, how did you get connected with them? I was very, very lucky. I <laughs> They were alumni of my program, my MFA program, um, the Writing for Children program at the New School. And so there was a, like an alumni mixer event, and I'm terrible at mixer events. I sit in the corner and I eat the cheese. But you were doing so good in there. You were like talking to everyone. So. I just come up with panels that we like oh, yeah, friends yeah, now, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you should have seen me last night <laughs> <laughs> with the chips and guac, and I was like, ah. but. Um, so I was sitting in a corner not talking to them, and luckily two of my uh, best friends from the program were talking to Cake, uh, to Danielle and Sona, and they heard them mention, like, yeah, we have a couple projects that we're trying to get out there, like that one with a Mexican-American family in Texas. And my friends were like, because we were in New York, you know, Mexican-American Texans are a rare breed in New York City. I guess they're probably not, but. Um, so they were like, Anna came, they dragged me over, they were like, meet Danielle, meet Sona, like, y'all should talk. Um, and so then, you know, once I got their information and, you know, was able to email them and uh, we sat down and talked about the project and that was when I really, like, got excited and got to see kind of where, where they were imagining it going, um, how that, like, how the family dynamics would play in, how the magic system would, um, would how it would operate, maybe not the details behind it, but like, what would happen with the spells, and I just got really excited, and I really wanted to yeah. be, you know, on board with this project. Well, I love the book, Thank you. and I'm having a student in my class is reading it and loving it. Oh, and she's really? a youngest of child of many, yes. so it's funny for me to like think about like what she must be thinking, like as the youngest child, because she totally fits the <laughs> character. Like she's like a clone of your character. Oh, good. So I'm wondering if she's picking up that like that's why I recommend the book to her. Yeah. Not. I doubt it, but it makes me laugh, which is good. <laughs> Uh, so how about you? Do you have a question? What question would you want to ask the people watching this video? And they will leave a comment below and they will answer your question. It could be anything. So where are you in your family? Are you an only child? Do you have siblings? Are you the middle child? Um, oldest, youngest? And what does that mean in your family? For me, I'm a middle child, but I was the... My, out of three or five? Out of three. Um, but, but my little brother's eight years younger. So I was a baby for a long time, and then I became the middle child, so I have like some dual experience there. I'm the oldest of seven, oh, wow. which means I'm the best in the family. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will put Bye. links down below to buy Love Sugar Magic and Adapt Your Trouble. You need to read this book. Your kids will love it. Thank you. Have an awesome, fantastic day. Thank you. Happy, happy reading.